Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and I'm here to show you an exciting new feature we've been working on for Construct 3. Uh, it's a complete redesign of the functions feature, uh, which was previously done with the functions plugin. Now, just to recap how old functions work, I've got a quick demo I'm going to show you here. Um, it uses a very simple function. Your functions are most likely going to be uh, more complicated and doing more useful things than this, but this is just uh, for demonstration purposes. I've got a little function called show message, and it simply uh, says uh, sets a text object's string to say hello, player name, your score is, and then your score. So you can see that takes two parameters. And just to recap how the old function system would work, um, you would add an action, and in the function plugin, uh, you would use the call function action, and you would type in the name of the function, which auto completes here, that's show message. And note you had to add the parameters yourself, um, so you have to remember how many parameters there were for the function, and you'll notice that these are generic descriptions of parameters. This says parameter 0, parameter 1, uh, and there's um, a generic description up here as well. So a common request has been to improve this, uh, which is quite reasonable. Um, and so, um, just in case you didn't know, functions are a way of basically running another event in an action. So on start of layout, this will call the show message function with the parameters Ashley and 123, which will run this event and set the text object's text. So if we now run that, we can see the message appear using the parameters from the function. Now, uh, I'm going to show you how the new function system works. Uh, it's now using built-in functions uh, directly built into the event system. Um, and here's how they work. First of all, it's a new kind of event block called a function block. So you can add a function, and you've got a dialog here to set the um, properties of the function. I'm going to call it the same thing. Um, you can use the new functions and the old functions in um, at the same time, uh, which might be useful for migrating over. Um, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, and I'm going to give this function a description, which I couldn't do before. Um, I'm just going to say display a message. Uh, I can put it in a category, which I'm going to call messages. And uh, the return type is used if, uh, if you use functions as expressions. But for an action, uh, we don't need a return type, so I'm going to leave that on none. And we can see a new kind of function block here. Um, that's not a condition. That's actually built into the function block, which is um, essentially part of the margin of the event. It's, uh, it's part of the container for conditions. Uh, the blue styling is just to highlight it. That's not final. Um, it's just my uh, development style. Um, and now, to add parameters, you can actually add them to the function block. And this is where things start to get um, a lot more interesting. So now I can add a parameter and I, and I can name it. Let's call this player name for the first parameter. I'm going to make it a string. Uh, and you can give it a description as well. Uh, so name to display. This is all placeholder stuff. Uh, it's just to demonstrate how it works. And you can see it appear inside the function block. Uh, I'm going to add the second parameter as well. Uh, let's call this player score. And we'll say that's the score to display. And you'll notice these look a lot like local variables. That's because they are. They're essentially uh, variables which are scoped to this block and any sub-events. So they're like local variables, but they apply to this function block as well. Um, and you can actually go and add uh, conditions to this as well. Um, and you'll notice these appear like other variables. Um, so I'm, going, I'm not going to use that, but that's just to show you can also add conditions to the function block, like a normal event. Um, but we're not going to use that. So now uh, I'm going to add the action to set the text inside this function. And so now I can uh, make it say the same message as before. And you'll notice as I type, I can use the um, the autocomplete shows the names of the variables, just like your, if you were using um, local variables. Um, I can't talk and type at the same time. Uh, and that's the second parameter. And there we go. 
So now you can see the difference in readability already. This is using named parameters, whereas before we just had numbers. Now let's uh, call this action. So I'm going to go to on start of layout, add an action, and there are two icons now because that, that, that um, that's the old function plugin, and this is the new built-in functions feature, which is like a, a system feature. Um, it uses the words built-in when you also have the function plugin to distinguish it better. So normally you'd only see this if you're only using the new functions. I'm going to double click on that, and this is uh, another major improvement. The uh, all the functions in your project are listed as if they are actions. So now my show message function appears here like an action um, with the uh, description I used earlier. And when I uh, select it, it's now got the parameters which I've added to the function block and they have their names and they have their descriptions. So th this is um, a lot easier to use. You don't have to remember how many parameters to add or what they were. Um, this tells you and it uses the information you've provided. And you can also see that the action here um, uses the uh, parameter names to help make it readable, whereas before it didn't show them. So I'm just going to disable the old um, action and call the new um, function. And there you go. It does the same thing as it did before. But it's much more readable, much more usable, and incidentally is about three times faster according to my performance tests. So that's pretty exciting. Um, now there's another feature, uh, previously you could call functions with an expression as well and this is also included in the uh, new functions uh, system. So previously, again I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to show you how it used to work and then I'm going to show you the new system. So previously, uh, sorry, what I've got set up here are two functions, again using the old functions and the new functions and this time instead of directly setting the text object's text, it um, uses set return value to return a string from this function. And the string is the same as I was setting on the text object. So this is just a, dem this is just a different way of doing the same thing, uh, is to demonstrate uh, using a function as an expression instead. So the way you'd use this previously is you would use a set text on the text object, and then you would type in function.call, so it's always the call expression and you'd have to type in the name of the function, show message, and the first parameter um, was call player, but I want to use my name. Um, so again, uh, you have to remember the number of parameters and what they were. And there we go. And so if I run this, you can see it's doing the same thing as it was before, but this time it's using the return value from a function. Now, with the new uh, approach, we've got a function block, and what I've done to this is I've used the, uh, I've set the return type to be a string. So that means you can call the OE function as an expression, and it knows that it returns a string. So now, if, uh, and, and I'm using a set return value action there again. Um, so now, if I go to the text object and set its text, first of all, the expressions dictionary now also lists all the functions. So if you uh, choose it here, you can see the show message function is listed as an expression and uh, it's got the description I put in before as well. Um, alternatively, you can use, uh, it's called functions, the built-in one just to distinguish it from the other one with an S. Uh, you can use autocomplete as, as um, uh, that's new as well, uh, and that lists all the functions in the project. And this is useful when you um, type the opening parenthesis, you get the call tip uh, here as well, which is showing you how many parameters um, it takes and what they are, and including the descriptions as well. So now it's uh, telling me I need to put in the player name and then the player score. So this is um, it's essentially creating a custom expression and the uh, other functions are like creating custom actions. So this is um, a, a really interesting kind of feature for extensibility in defining your own events. Uh, and you can see again the readability is much improved because it says uh, show message with two parameters 
uh, whereas before you have this kind of function call boilerplate around it. Um, and I'm going to disable the old uh, action again and show you. So that's using the new function system and it's setting the same text. Now, where things get really interesting is often you want to edit existing events using functions. Uh, for example, you might want to rename a function. Previously, if I rename this function here, uh, nothing else in the project changes, so it becomes a bit of a chore to update um, function names. Whereas with the new system, it's like when you rename an object, uh, all the references in the event sheet update automatically as well. So suppose I decide I want to actually rename this to say show player message to be clearer and when I press OK you can see it's updated the name of the expression that I put in the set text action there. So that saves me having to go through and rename things in the project and of course the same thing happens with uh, calling functions from actions. And even more usefully, when you add another parameter to this function, previously nothing would happen. You'd have to go back and update all your events again. And just like magic, when you add a new parameter, it's added an extra parameter to the expression there as well. And you can even reorder them, put them in a different place, and the parameters rearrange themselves according to the new order. This means you can do whatever you want to edit your function block and your entire project updates automatically to reflect the change. And I'm particularly pleased with this because that was tough to get right. <laughs> so this is the new uh, functions, built-in functions feature in Construct 3. We hope to be releasing it soon. Uh, we've got even more updates planned for you in future as well. Um, we hope you enjoy it.